What's up everybody, Chris here from Chris Gates Fitness. I am back with another episode and thank you for tuning in. Um, I'm really excited about today's episode. What we're gonna talk about is how specifically to structure a diet that helps you feel full while also controlling calories because a common struggle uh, that all of us probably have from time to time is you know trying to diet down trying to lose a little bit of weight but really struggling to find a way to do that while feeling as full and satisfied as you possibly can on lower calories it's something that's not um, easy to do um, but what we're going to do in today's episode is really outline uh, how you can put together a strategy that will make that happen and how you can structure your meals, what they should look like so that you can actually feel full while you're dieting. And uh, we're going to dive into some of what the research says and use that as our guide, as always, to figure out how we can put this all together. So that's what's on tap for today's episode. Again, thank you for tuning in. Before we get into all of it, I want to encourage you, as always, to subscribe to the podcast. So we're on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Uh, You head over to those, hit subscribe. You'll get every episode the minute it's released. I also put videos, full videos of these podcast episodes on my Facebook page and my YouTube channel. So uh, you can head over there, hit like or hit subscribe and follow along as well. And I'm actually trying to do, um, I'm trying to make these full length podcast videos uh, a little bit more interesting to watch because I understand that just watching me sit down and talk at a desk for 15, 20, 25 minutes up to a half hour It's not always the most interesting thing to just stare at me. So uh, I've been doing a little bit more with trying to get some different angles of the episodes uh, to switch things up, make it a little more interesting. I've also been incorporating some of my training footage in there. Oftentimes we're talking about training. If not, like today's episode, we're talking about dieting and how we roll here is you diet and you work out. You do both to try and make the biggest impact possible. So I'm kind of trying to just put some more visuals in there to make the video podcast episodes a little bit more interesting. I'd love your feedback if if you hear this and uh, you give it a look. I'd love to hear what you what you think. And if you have any recommendations for continuing to do that, continuing to spice things up and make it more interesting. I, I'd love to hear them. So please feel free to reach out to me. You can reach out to me. I mean, in, in any number of ways, I'm on basically every uh, social media platform that there is. I mentioned YouTube and Facebook. I'm also on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. My website is chrisgatesfitness.com. On there, I have a contact page that you can fill out and just, it'll go right to me via email. Um, and uh, yeah, there's, so there's a, a ton of ways to get in touch with me and, and I would really appreciate it. I'd love to hear from you if you're a listener or if uh, if you watch. Um, also, uh, you know, probably most importantly, I am a coach. So I'm an online fitness coach. What I do is I work with people across the country. It uh, doesn't matter where you are, but we can work together to put together a comprehensive fitness program. Um, and you know, oftentimes that'll have a, a nutrition piece to it as well. And we can work you towards whatever your goals may be. If you want to build muscle, get stronger, lose weight, uh, anything in between. Uh, I've worked with tons of people with tons of different goals across the uh, across the board, and um, I love to do that. So that's why I'm here, and and that's why I put out this content. So, uh, you know, if uh, you're interested in coaching, or if you've tried some things and you haven't found success, and and you need a little bit of extra help, that's why I'm here. I hope you reach out to me, and you know, we can talk about what would work best for you. Lastly, something I always seem to forget is I uh, send out a weekly newsletter. So if you're not subscribed, go over to my website, chrisgatesfitness.com. And there is a newsletter page along the top menu. Uh, You can click on newsletter and just enter your email, sign up. I like this is something where a lot of times you sign up for a newsletter and your email gets on 50 different lists and then you're just getting spammed all the time. That's not how this one works. I manage it. I don't try and sell you or spam you on anything. I just send the content of the week directly to you. All the content is authored by me, and um, you know I'm just trying to help uh, help you out. So if you're interested, sign up for the newsletter as well. With all that said, hey, let's dive into the topic. Like I said, this is uh, the topic is how to feel full while controlling your calories. And there's also an article on this topic on my website, ChrisGatesFitness.com. So if you want to read more about this after you listen head over to the website, click on articles, and you'll find it there. So a common struggle when setting up your diet is just figuring out how exactly to do this, right? How to feel full and satisfied when your calories are low. And like I said at the start, it's not something that's super easy because common pieces of our diets nowadays are foods that are often pretty calorie dense, 
uh, often processed. So when you go into a phase where you want to lose some weight, if you want to diet down, it's almost like you feel like you have to totally reinvent your diet and get a completely new set of foods. Um, and those new sets of foods, if they're not highly processed, calorie dense, like I talked about, they are probably going to be a whole lot less satisfying and that's really not fun for anyone. And, and, you know, to make matters worse, you can talk to any person, you can talk to 10 different people and get 10 different answers uh, as to what diet is best. You know, somebody will tell you a high protein diet is going to make you feel full. And then somebody else will tell you a high fat diet is going to make you feel full. And then you'll hear about the magic of keto and carnivore and all of these different diet plans that, you know, each recommendation or, or plan tells you that this is the most optimal way to do things and there's a magic to it. And there's never any magic to it. We've talked about this. This is ep- going to be episode uh, right around like 24, 25, 26, something like that. Uh, we talked about this a lot by now. There is no magic. The magic, if you want to call it that, is being in a calorie deficit. So let's establish that once again, first and foremost, for you to diet, for you to lose weight, you have to be in a calorie deficit, which means you need to be burning more calories on a daily basis than you are consuming. That's that's the magic. But you'll hear all this stuff from any different uh, people that you talk to, and they'll tell you different things. So that continues to make this kind of tough to navigate in terms of dieting and and trying to do it while feeling good uh, throughout the entire process. So what is the real answer? Um, Is there a type of diet or a way to create meals that is going to make you feel full and make this process maybe a little bit easier? And the answer is, yeah, there probably is. And hey, we're going to dive into that in this episode. There's a an article that came out, I, I, uh, I subscribe to the Mass Research Review. Um, it's, a, it's a great outlet for content um, and, and research and information for, for coaches. And uh, there was an article in there by Eric Trexler. And the title of it was, Protein is Satiating, but it's not that simple. And it breaks down this topic because I kind of mentioned it a minute ago. There is this claim that pro- high protein diets are going to be more satiating. They're going to help you feel fuller and it's gonna make dieting easier, but is that actually true? And is there research that supports it? And there's a decent amount of research on this topic, which we're gonna dive into. Um, So let's do just that. Let's talk about what the research says about different nutrients like protein. Uh, We could talk a little bit about meal composition, and then we'll move into some recommendations and coaching cues. That's really gonna be the meat of this podcast episode. Talk about how you can set up uh, a diet that starts setting you on the path of just being able to do all of this Uh, a little bit easier. So what the research says is we can start with Trexler's review that I just mentioned. He reviewed a meta-analysis that was centered around the topic of short-term and long-term impact of protein on appetite and what the meta-analysis found. A meta-analysis is um, a, a piece of research that reviews Uh, a lot of research centered around a specific topic to draw a conclusion. So what this meta-analysis found was that protein generally decreased hunger in acute settings. And what that means is um, high protein meals, people that had high protein meals uh, generally felt an increased feeling of fullness immediately after that specific meal. Um, Now, as we stretch that out long term, that feeling of fullness seems to Uh, kind of go away over time for people that continue to eat high protein. It's almost like you introduce a high protein diet and it's it's so much different than what you were eating before that you actually do feel a whole hell of a lot fuller uh, early on. But as your body gets used to that diet, over time, it just becomes the new norm. That's that's kind of what it what it seems like from from looking at this meta analysis and some other research. So. that's not to say eating a high protein diet is a bad idea. It's quite the contrary. Eating a high protein diet uh, in almost every case is is probably a good idea unless there's a, a medical reason that you shouldn't. Um, there are many health benefits associated with high protein diets, including centered around this topic of you know dieting down, wanting to lose weight, wanting to feel full. Um, using a high protein diet can really benefit you, and we'll talk more about that here in a moment. So if your current diet doesn't include um, much protein, you're probably going to see at least a a short-term benefit for bumping up the amount of protein that you eat uh, each day. And what I like to recommend to people, you know, when we're talking about like what's a low amount of protein, moderate, 
and high amount of protein. Most people, generally speaking, don't eat enough. So I like to set the bar at just 100 grams of protein a day because it seems like most people don't eat that much. Um, and if you can get 100 grams or more per day, you're really going to start working your working yourself in the right direction, whether it be for something like weight loss or even if you want to build muscle and you, you haven't been eating enough protein. Well, if we can try and hit triple digits every day, that's probably a lot more than you are already eating. And then from there, we can increase the, the protein intake. That's not a clinical recommendation. Make that clear. It's just something that I operate with, with coaching clients. Um, so maybe that's, you know, food for thought for you listening is maybe thinking about trying to get hundred grams of protein a day and seeing how you feel on that. Um, that might be a whole hell of a lot more, like I said, than, than you've had to date and, and it might, it might help you feel fuller. So, uh, with that said, Within Trexler's review uh, article of the meta-analysis, he actually points out a different mass article that dives into um, hyper-palatable meals and how that can affect the brain and uh, how that you know, effect on the brain affects your hunger levels. Um, and I'm not going to try and dive in and explain to you all how the brain works because that's a little bit above <laughs> my level of expertise. But um, in short, it talks about how hyper-palatable meals uh, really can just ignite your hunger cues and, you know, these foods, which I'll dive into in the coaching cues section of this episode. We'll talk about what hyperpalatable foods are. Um, they can really be addicting. They can really get you going in the wrong direction. And they're typically very calorie dense, which means you don't have to eat a lot of these foods to rack up a lot of calories. Um, so, to, to take all of this research evidence and recommendations uh, and, and, and kind of encapsulate it, one of the suggestions within this article was um, a few ways that you can build meals that may be most ideal in terms of helping you to feel full. So what that looks like are four different points, and they are high protein, having fiber in your meals, having a high water content in your meals, and having the foods that are making up your meals be mostly uh, unprocessed or at least minimally processed, as minimally processed as possible. So Trexler summarized everything and he had some, uh, a few strategies that I thought would be really helpful to share on this episode of the podcast as well to help uh, increase fullness and reduce hunger within your diet. And they are number one, you should not be on a low protein diet. We kind of just touched on that. You should at least be on moderate or high protein. Uh, and like I said, my recommendation of a starting point for high protein is trying to get to 100 grams of protein a day. And number two, seek out food sources with plenty of fiber and water content. We just mentioned that. Number three, find a meal timing pattern that works for you. Don't worry about what other plans say or what other people tell you. Find a meal timing pattern that works for you, which just means find out within the calories you have allotted for yourself that day, how can you space these meals out to help you feel full throughout the day? And number four, avoid hyper palatable meals. So let's talk about what hyper palatable means, and then we can transition from there into coaching cues as to how to set this all up for yourself. Hyperpalatable foods are considered to be, by many, the types of foods that uh, really are driving the obesity epi epidemic in our country. They're foods um, that have a mixture of ingredients, normally highly processed, um, that light up the reward centers in your brain. And again, I'm not going to dive into how the brain works, but um, I think that's that's enough to make you understand that they you, you eat these things, your brain immediately says, ooh. I need as much of this as I can possibly get, and then you're just binging on very high-calorie foods. Um, the way that I describe this to people in, in practice is one word, and that word is Doritos. <laughs> That's legit the best example I can give anybody of what a hyper-palatable food is because everybody has had Doritos. Nobody knows what the hell is in Doritos, what that flavor dust is made up of, nobody knows, but you and I all know that the minute you have one, you have to lick the dust off your fingers, you can't get enough, and you just binge probably the whole bag. Um, I haven't had Doritos in years because it's a very big trigger food for me, and I think that's why I can so easily 
get the point across by just saying Doritos when we're talking about hyper palatable foods. So these foods typically fall into the categories of desserts or sweets um, or snacks, but they can also be consumed as your primary meal source by way of fast food options. So this falls into a lot of the things that you can get at a McDonald's or a Burger King or a Taco Bell, places like that, um, where you know, you're getting a meal's worth of food given to you in a small bag and it's running you well over a thousand calories because you have a cheeseburger and a side of fries and they're just so highly processed that, uh, you know, you're, you're not getting a lot of food volume, but you're getting a ton of calories and these foods are addictive and we all know people that are addicted to these types of foods and they're the exact opposite of what you want in your diet if you're trying to lose weight and furthermore, if you're trying to lose weight and also feel full and satisfied throughout your dieting program. Um, Really, whether you're dieting or not, these foods shouldn't be in there, but especially if you're trying to lose weight, these foods should not be in there. If you're trying to feel full, these foods should not be in there because they're calorie dense. I've said that a few times, and if you don't know what that means, it just means your food volume is low so that the that I by that I mean not the calories of your food but the actual size of your food so if you think about you have a dinner plate the amount of food you can actually put on your dinner plate um, a low volume food is going to take up very little space on that plate a high volume food is going to take up the whole plate um, so you can compare foods based on their food volume where it's like if I make a cheeseburger at home, I'm probably going to be able to make it for way, way fewer calories than if I bought a Big Mac at McDonald's. So it's the same food volume, but McDonald's is costing me way more calories than the burger that I can make at home. And that's going to kind of transition us into what the coaching cues are. And it it really is just simply rooted in preparing your own food. You should cook your own food. If you're trying to lose weight, you should cook your own food as much as you possibly can. If you're trying to, you can lose weight ordering out. Man, is it gonna be harder to do though because you can't control every aspect of those foods that you're ordering. You don't know, you know, you can you can estimate what the calories are gonna be for food that you order out or you go through the drive through window or something like that, but you don't know exactly, you know, the cooking oils that they're making the food in, which adds calories, you know, how much uh, butter uh, butter oil are they adding to it? What's the sodium content of the food? Like, you can't control any of this if you're not preparing the food yourself. But if you are preparing the food yourself, you can dial things in uh, very succinctly and know how many calories that you're going to be consuming. And, you know, from there, okay, we established, yes, you should be preparing your own food. That's gonna help you feel full. That's gonna help you diet successfully. From there, search for foods that are high in protein. Make those the focal point of the meal. We talked about that earlier in terms of recommendations on how to structure your meals. They should be high protein. So if you, if you first and foremost, you're looking for protein, you should start first and foremost with a protein source. So we're talking about a chicken breast or a steak, something uh, that you can consider the focal point of your meal, and then surround it with other foods that aren't highly palatable that you can prepare yourself and that are whole minimally processed foods like mixed vegetables or a cup of rice or something like that. And then from there, if you know that food is just too bland on its own, which for most people it is, for me it is, well, you can season it yourself and you can get that hyper palatable taste but for almost zero calories, or in a lot of cases, actually zero calories, by taking a stroll down the spices and seasoning aisle at your your, uh, grocery store and looking for different seasonings to try. Uh, You know, it's, that that is such a game changer right there because you you can prepare the same food and then season it 12 different ways and you have what feels like a lot of variety even though you're eating essentially the same foods every day. Um, You're getting your high protein. You're able to get your high fiber. You can, you know, have water content by adding a big salad or something like that. And then you're kind of just checking off all these boxes. You're feeling full after your meals, but you're, because you're getting high food volume, but at the end of the day, your calories are controlled and they are low. I know a repetitive diet can be hard for people. Um, So the seasoning piece and even some sauces, sauces are almost always going to come with calories. 
but you can find sauces um, that are low calories that can, just like seasonings, continue to make your food taste good, give you that more hyper palatable feel, but you're not, you know, adding 500 calories to get it. Um, so, you know, I, I, I talk about this all the time. I write about this all the time, but so much about being successful with fitness and nutrition is about being consistent, about having routines and about just nailing it every day. And, um, sometimes that means having a diet that involves a lot of the same foods, but it's on you to find new ways to make them, you know, taste different, get some of that variety, even though you're eating the same foods every day. So, um, you know, that's, that's generally my recommendation here. Can you feel full or does every diet have to be a struggle? And do you have to feel physically drained all the time and low energy because you have no calories? I mean, you have to be low calorie, but you can find creative ways to do this and make yourself feel full. We went through some of the research. It outlines what you can do. And then hopefully some of this information I just ran through, uh, in terms of coaching cues, can help you actually apply this. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions on this topic, like I said at the beginning, there's <laughs> about a million ways to get in touch with me. So please feel free to reach out in any way. Uh, I'd love to talk with you more about it if it's something that you're interested in. Uh, this was a fun one to dive into the research and, and just learn a little bit more. I, I, I learned a lot of new information by um, by reading through a lot of this stuff and, and I thought it was pretty cool. So uh, I hope this helps you. I hope you found it valuable. If you did, please head over to Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Uh, leave us a rating and review. That helps the podcast reach more people. Um, and make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already. Like I said, there's video episodes of these podcasts on my Facebook page and my YouTube channel. I'm also on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, chrisgatesfitness.com. Like I said at the beginning, I'm a coach. If you'd like to talk about you know, ways we could put a program together for you, I would love to do that. Hit me up. And uh, if not, I'll be back with you guys next week. So sign up for that newsletter. I'll be back with you guys next week. Hope you enjoy this one. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. See ya.